This is Lindsay Clark. I'm your primary instructor for current topics in medical laboratory science. This is lecture 25 and it is part two of lab math. So the objectives for today's lecture, number one, explain what is meant by a multiple dilution and a serial dilution and discuss the differences between them. Number two, when given appropriate data, calculate the dilution in each tube of a multiple or serial dilution, the concentration of a sample in each tube of a multiple or serial dilution, and the final sample dilution when additional reagents are added to a tube. And number three, recall concepts and formulas from Lab Math 1 and apply them to this lecture and to future Lab Math problems. So some terms that you need to know for this lecture are multiple dilutions and serial dilutions. And you also need to know what we mean when we say in a series, as well as the advantage to different types of dilutions. So multiple dilutions are a series of dilutions in which different dilutions are made in each tube. So for example, you might make a one to two dilution, then a one to five, then a 1 to 50 and maybe a 1 to 200 and all of those are made in the same series. Serial dilutions are a series of dilutions made in set consistent increments. So for example, each tube in the series would be diluted 1 to 2. Now the phrase in a series just means that each dilution is made from the previous dilution. And the advantage to multiple or serial dilutions is that you can make large dilutions using small amounts of serum. So if you're limited in how much serum you actually have, you need to make a large dilution, this is one way that you can do that. So let's go over multiple dilutions first. Um, so we need to know what formulas we're going to use for multiple dilutions. Now to determine the final dilution in a series of multiple dilutions, the formula is the final dilution is equal to dilution one multiplied by dilution two multiplied by dilution three and so on. So an example, a 10% sodium chloride solution is diluted one to two. It is then re-diluted one to five and then one to five again. What is the dilution in tubes two and three? Now the final dilution in tube two can be worked out by multiplying the dilution in tube one, which is a one to two, by the dilution in tube two, a one to five, and that gives us a one to 10. And in tube three, we will multiply all three tubes together to get one to 50. Or, since we already know the final dilution in tube 2, we can simply multiply that by the dilution in tube 3, which gives us the same dilution of 1 to 50. And the next formula we need to know is one to determine the final concentration of the sample after dilution. For this, the final concentration of sample is equal to the original concentration divided by the final dilution. So for example, we have that same 10% sodium chloride solution, and that's been diluted three times, a one to two, a one to five, and then another one to five. So what is the sample concentration in each of these tubes? So for tube one, we're going to divide 10% by our one to two dilution, and that's gonna give us 5%. For tube two, we're going to divide 10% by our one to 10 dilution, because remember one to 10 was our final dilution in tube two, and we get 1% for tube two. And tube three, we divide 10% by our one to 50 dilution, and that equals 0.2%. Now, I want you to notice that the concentration decreases as the number of dilutions increase. And this makes sense, right? So the more diluted it is, the less concentrated it is. 
Always make sure that your numbers make sense when you're doing these calculations. So here's a practice problem for multiple dilutions. The concentration of a sample is 1500 milligrams per deciliter. The sample was diluted in a series as follows. Tube one is undiluted. Tube two, one to five. Tube three, one to two. Tube four, one to four. Tube five, one to five. And tube six is one to 10. What is the dilution factor in the final tube? And what is the concentration of sample in each tube? So we're gonna break these down and do one at a time. So to find the dilution factor in the final tube, we first have to determine the final dilution. So the formula that we will need to use is going to be final dilution equals dilution one times dilution two times dilution three and so on. So tube one is undiluted, okay? In tube two, we have a one to five. In tube three, a one to two, tube four, a one to four, and so on. So for this problem, all we have to do is multiply the dilutions. And once we multiply all the dilutions, that gives us a final dilution of one to 2,000. So the question is asking for the dilution factor. And how do we get the dilution factor? So remember, it is just the reciprocal of the dilution ratio. So in this problem, the dilution factor is 2000. So always remember to look at what your question is asking you and give that answer. So next, the second part of this question, um, we need to determine the concentration of sample in each tube. So the formula that we need to use is going to be final concentration equals original concentration divided by final dilution. So we know the dilutions that are in each tube. So we need to determine the final dilution for each tube and we do that by multiplying. So for tube one, the dilution is basically going to be one to one or just one because it's undiluted. Now in tube two, we made a one to five dilution, and we're gonna multiply that by the previous dilution, which again is just one, and so we will still have a one to five. And in tube three, we made a one to two, so we'll multiply that by tube two, the dilution of one to five, and we get one to 10. So we're gonna do this for all the tubes, and these are the answers that you should get. So next, we need to set up our formula for each tube. So the original concentration was 1500 milligrams per deciliter. So we're gonna divide that by the final dilution in each tube. So tube one was undiluted, so the final concentration is unchanged. For tube two, our final dilution is one to five. So we take that original concentration of 1500 and we divide that by five and that gives us our final concentration of 300 milligrams per deciliter. Now we're gonna do this for all the tubes and these should be your answers. Now on to serial dilution. So a serial dilution series may contain up to 10 tubes or even more. So the first tube is undiluted and each subsequent dilution is made from the previous dilution. And remember all dilutions in a series for serial dilutions are gonna be the same. So for making one to two dilutions, all the tubes are gonna be a one to two dilution. So when performing serial dilutions, always make sure you mix your tubes well before transferring the aliquot to the next tube. And if you do your serial dilution correctly, it should look like the photo here, if you were doing it with colors, um, or if you were doing it with uh, blood, for instance. Now you may hear the term fold used to describe this type of series. So if every dilution in the series is one to two, you have a two-fold series. 
if all the dilutions in the series are 1 to 5, you would have a 5-fold series. So for serial dilutions, the first tube in the series is going to contain undiluted sample only. And again, this is referred to as a 1 to 1, um, or it is sometimes also called neat or straight or just stock. So you'll hear all those terms, and those will refer to tube one that is undiluted. So let's talk about the formulas we need for serial dilutions. Now, these should look very familiar to you because they are the same formulas that we used in multiple dilutions. So to, to, to determine the final dilution in a series, we will use final dilution equals dilution 1 times dilution 2 times dilution 3. To calculate the final concentration of sample after dilution, we will use final concentration is equal to original concentration divided by final dilution. So here's our example problem. A series of five tubes are prepared. Tube 1 is undiluted. Tubes two through five contain one milliliter of diluent. One milliliter of serum is added to tube two. One milliliter from tube two is then transferred to tube three and so on. After one milliliter from tube four is added to tube five, one mil is discarded from tube five. So think about that for a minute. Why are we discarding a mil from tube five? Well, we want all of our tubes to contain the same volume. And so if you leave that mill in there, it's going to mess up the amount that you have in the tube. So the question here is, what is the dilution in each tube? Okay, so here's our example problem. We're going to walk through this. And remember, our question is, what is the dilution in each tube? So first, we need to know what formula to use. And our formula is going to be final dilution is equal to dilution 1 times dilution 2 times dilution 3 and so on. So our first tube is undiluted serum. We're going to take 1 mil of serum and add it to tube 2, which contains 1 mil of diluent. Now our total volume in tube 2 is 2 milliliters. And our initial volume was 1 milliliter. So from there, we can determine that we had a 1 to 2 dilution. Next, we're going to take 1 milliliter of the 1 to 2 dilution in tube 2 and transfer it to tube 3. And tube 3 also has 1 mil of diluent in it. So again, our total volume for tube 3 is 2 milliliters. And our initial volume of sample that we took from tube 2 is 1 milliliter. So this again gives us a 1 to 2 dilution. But we're not done yet. That is not your final dilution in tube 3. So to find the final dilution, remember we have to do some multiplying. We're going to multiply the dilution in tube 3 by the dilution in tube 2. So 1 to 2 multiplied by 1 to 2 is going to give us a 1 to 4 dilution. Now that is our final dilution in tube 3. So we'll do this again for tube four. We're gonna transfer one mil. We'll determine our total volume and initial volume. This gives us a one to two dilution. And at this point, you should be seeing a pattern, okay? So these are all one to two. So you are likely dealing with a two-fold series here, right? So now we're gonna multiply. But remember, we're gonna multiply the dilution in tube four by the final dilution in tube three. So we're actually gonna multiply one to two times one to four. That is going to give us a one to eight dilution. So one more time, we transfer one mil, we determine our total volume, initial volume, gives us a one to two dilution, we're gonna multiply, and we end up with a one to 16 dilution. And don't forget, um, so again, this is an example of a two-fold series. Don't forget you'd want to discard a mil from that um, last tube. So let's move on and we will do a serial dilution practice problem. And this will be part one. So for this problem, we have a series of six tubes 
and tube one is undiluted. Tube two contains 1.9 milliliters of diluent. 0 0.1 milliliters of serum is added to tube two. Tubes three through six contain one milliliter of diluent. So one milliliter of dilution from tube two is transferred to tube three. One milliliter from tube three is transferred to tube four and so on. And after one mil from tube five is added to tube six, remember we're gonna discard one mil. So the question is, what is the dilution in each tube? Okay, so let's walk through this. And this is very similar to our example problem. It's just got a couple different numbers in it. So tube one is our undiluted serum. So we are going to add 0 0.1 mils of serum to 1.9 mils of diluent that is in tube two. This is gonna give us a total volume of two mils and an initial volume of 0 0.1. Now, two divided by 0 0.1 gives us 20. So our dilution in tube two is one to 20. Now, we're gonna take one mil from tube two, add it to tube three, and that contains one mil of diluent already. So we will determine our total volume and our initial volume. So our total volume is two. Our initial volume this time is one because we're taking that from tube two. It's a one mil transfer. So in tube three, we have a one to two dilution that we've just made. But remember, we're not quite done. So we have to do some multiplying. So we will multiply our tube three dilution, one to two, by our tube two dilution, one to 20. And that is going to give us a final dilution of one to 40 in tube three. So we're gonna do this again. We'll take a mil from tube three, add it to tube four. Let's determine our total volume and initial volume. And that's gonna give us a one to two dilution. And again, we'll do some multiplying. So our one to two dilution gets multiplied by uh, our one to 40 dilution from tube three, gives us a final dilution in tube four of one to 80. So again to tube five, total volume, initial volume, it's a one to two dilution. We're gonna multiply that by our one to 80 dilution and we end up with one to 160. One more time to tube six. Again, total volume, initial volume gives us a one to two dilution. Multiply that by our one to 160 dilution. Gives us a final dilution in tube six of one to 320. And again, don't forget, we wanna take one mil and discard it. Okay, here's part two of our practice problem. And part two is to determine the concentration of sample in each tube, given the original concentration is 1,280 milligrams per deciliter. So what formula are we going to use for this? Well, again, we are looking for final concentration in each tube. So we're going to use final concentration is equal to original concentration divided by final dilution. Now we already know the final dilutions in each tube. So we've got one to one in tube one, in tube two is one to 20, tube three, one to 40, and so on. So we just figured that out, right? We have all of those. And so we know the original concentration is also 1,280 milligrams per deciliter. So all we need to do here is divide the original concentration, 1,280, by the dilution factor for each tube. So for tube one, we will divide 1280 and it's just divided by one because it's an undiluted one-to-one -one sample. So our final concentration here is unchanged. For tube two, 1280 will divide by 20, which is the dilution factor for tube two that is going to give us a concentration of 64 milligrams per deciliter. 
tube 3, we're going to take 1280 divided by 40. That gives us a 32 milligram per deciliter concentration. For tube 4, again 1280 and it's divided by the dilution factor for tube 4, so divided by 80. That's going to give us a 16 milligrams per deciliter final concentration for tube 4. Now tube 5, same thing, going to divide, gives us an 8 milligram per deciliter concentration. And finally for tube 6, again we're going to divide, going to have a final concentration in tube 6 of 4 milligrams per deciliter. So I want you to look at this and notice the pattern of our final concentration in each tube. So there's going to be a few more practice problems that we're going to work through. Um, so we'll see, hopefully you can follow along and we can get the answers. So our practice problem number two, part one. We have a 1 to 1,000 dilution of serum that needs to be made, but we only have 10 microliters of serum available. So we want to make a 10-fold dilution series to achieve that final 1 to 1,000 dilution. So what does it mean to make a 10-fold dilution series? Well, remember, that just refers to your dilution ratio. So basically, this means we're going to dilute 1 to 10 a whole bunch. So for this problem, we know we have 10 microliters of serum available, and we know that we need to make 10 full dilutions, and that means we're making 1 to 10 dilutions. So for tube 2, we have the original volume, which is going to be your 10 microliters of serum, and we know the final dilution that we need is 1 to 10. So now we need to determine the amount of diluent that we need. 10 microliters is our initial volume added to an unknown amount of diluent is going to give us a 1 to 10 dilution. So if you do the math, you know that we will need 90 microliters of diluent. And this is going to be the same for the remaining tubes because we're always going to make a 1 to 10 dilution. So you'll have 90 microliters of diluent in each tube. So we are going to use 10 microliters. Oh, for tube 2, actually, we need to make sure we know that gives us a 1 to 10 dilution, which we were um, expecting, right? Now, we're going to take 10 microliters from tube 2. And we're going to add it to tube 3, which, again, has 90 microliters of diluent. This is actually another 1 to 10 dilution, but remember, we have to multiply, so that's actually going to give us a 1 to 100 dilution for tube 3. And by tube 4, if we do our 10 microliters added to 90 microliters, our 1 to 10 dilution, and we multiply it by 1 to 100, we get our 1 to 1,000 dilution. And don't forget, we want to discard our 10 microliters. For part two of this problem, we need to determine the final concentration of sample in tube four if the initial concentration is 75,000 nanograms per deciliter. First, we need to know what formula we're going to use. So we're going to use, we're looking for final concentration, so we're going to use that formula. Final concentration is equal to original concentration divided by final dilution. Now, let's plug our numbers in. So we have 75,000 nanograms per deciliter, and that's divided by 1,000, and that gives us a final concentration of 75 nanograms per deciliter in tube 4. And I want everyone to make sure that they know where those numbers came from. So the 75,000, again, we're told that that is the initial concentration. And the 1,000 is the dilution factor, or that final dilution, in the last tube. So one last practice problem. A dilution sequence was performed in a micro titer plate by first adding 25 microliters of serum to 100 microliters of diluent in well 1. 25 microliters of the first dilution, well 1, was added to 100 microliters of diluent in well 2. 
Then 25 microliters from well 2 was added to 100 microliters of diluent in well 3. If this same procedure is continued, what would the dilution be in well 6? So here we have all of our wells, and we know already that they have 100 microliters of diluent in them in each well. And we want to know what is the final dilution in well 6. So starting with well 1, we're going to add 25 microliters of serum. So we need to find our total volume, 100 plus 25, 125 microliters, and our initial volume, which is going to be 25 microliters. So then we're going to divide, and that's going to give us 5. And this number, remember, that's going to be um, give us our dilution. So our dilution is going to end up being 1 to 5 in this well. So for well 2, we're going to add 25 microliters from well 1. And again, we need to determine our total volume and initial volume. So our total volume is 125. Our initial volume we took from well 1 is 25 microliters. Again, we're going to divide. We're going to get 5. That's going to give us a 1 to 5 dilution. But what do we need to do here? We're not done, right? So we're actually going to multiply our 1 to 5 by 1 to 5. And that's going to give us a 1 to 25. So our final dilution in well 2 is 1 to 25. And now we're going to continue this for each well. So we add 25 microliters. We're going to do our initial volume, total volume, divide. We get 5, another 1 to 5 dilution. And remember, this is a serial dilution. So what are all of your dilutions going to be? 1 to 5. But remember, we need to multiply. And this time, we're multiplying by 1 to 25. That's going to give us a 1 to 125. So that's our final dilution in tube 3. Again, add 25 microliters to well 4. We're going to do total volume, initial volume, multiply, get our dilution. And then we'll multiply that by our previous dilution, which is going to give us a 1 to 625. So for well 5, we'll add 25 microliters. We'll do all of our calculations here, and we will get a final dilution for tube 5, for, I'm sorry, for well 5, of 1 to 3,125. And finally, we'll add 25 microliters to well 6. We do all of our calculations, and we end up with a 1 to 15,625. And that is going to be our final dilution for well 6. So that is all I have for you guys today for this lecture. And again, I want you guys to please reach out if you're struggling with any of this or if you need any help. I'm available for emails, phone calls. We can do face-to-face -face Skype or Zoom, um, anything that you need that will be helpful for you. I want to make sure that I am available for you guys. So my contact information, as usual, is listed here. Um, and I always try to respond within 24 hours. Usually it's much quicker than that, but I give myself 24 hours because things happen. I do sleep occasionally. Um, so please contact me um, if you need any help with this or with the previous lecture. And here are references for this lecture, and that's all I've got for you guys.